Okay, so hello, my name is Harry Cordo. I'm 14 and I remember the Young Scientist Journal. I am currently in year 10 at a school in Canterbury. And today we're going to be talking to Christina Astin, co-founder of the Young Scientist Journal and STEM ambassador. So, Christina, welcome. Thank you very much. It's lovely to be here. I just like to ask you a few questions about the Young Scientist Journal. So could you start us off with talking about sort of what is the Young Scientist Journal? So Young Scientist Journal is an online um, peer review science journal, which is um, unique because it's not only written by um, school students aged 12 to 20, but they also do all the peer review editing and the production of the journal. And in fact, um, it's, it's generated a whole network internationally of um, young people interested in STEM. So um, uh, I think there are authors now that come from over 45 countries. Um, we founded it in 2006 and there have been over um, 20 issues now. Um, most of them um, published in hard copy as well. This is actually the, the most recent um, hard copy. That's issue 21. But um, yeah, it's a very exciting project for any young scientist to get involved with. So what inspired you to, to start this journal and what were your initial thoughts behind it? Well, I was a science teacher and I was very conscious that there was some amazing research going on in schools, really, you know, more extraordinary than many people would, would, would imagine. But there was no real platform for them to publish their research. Um, I mean, it's unlikely they're going to get published in, in nature, let's say. So uh, why not start a, a journal where they could do that and become a published scientist before they even leave school? Um, and also by doing that, um, two other things, they connect with this international community of other like-minded scientists. And, and a recent initiative in the journal called ReSTEM is doing that explicitly. Um, but also also develop a lot of skills, skills in writing, skills in, in, in organising their research for publication. So that's really interesting. Could you just share with us some of the highlights, uh, maybe some of the lower points that you've had with the organisation? And um, could you just give us a short explanation as to why they were so significant? Okay, so... I would say that some of the highlights have been when we've got together uh, for our conferences, which we've um, tried to hold every year. Um, I think this year will might have to be virtual. Yeah. Um, and through that, uh, we've heard from um, the students about their own research. We've also had um, uh, professional scientists um, deliver um, talks. Um, and poster presentations and so on. And, you know, I've met some amazing people who are great advocates, great champions of the journal, like um, the late Sir Harry Croto, Jim Al-Khalili, um, Martin Polyakov. Um, but to be honest, I think the biggest highlight for me over the last few years, especially when I was the mentor for the journal, was the young people themselves. Some of the um, students who took the role of chief editor have been absolutely inspirational and although sometimes it was a challenge to know to, to get the balance right between steering and leading the journal myself and helping them supporting them um, and on the other hand leaving them uh, the freedom to take the initiative and and run the journal themselves that balance was sometimes difficult to achieve but um, the skills that they've developed um, and the directions that they've taken the journal have been absolutely inspirational and obviously, much of the journal is based around STEM, what we talked about, the re-STEM programme. Why do you think it is so important for people in our generation to be interested in STEM? Well, that's a really good question, Harry. And um, of course, as a STEM ambassador, I'm really keen to try and encourage more young people into STEM because we have a huge shortage in STEM careers in this country um, and, and indeed globally. But no young person is going to get into STEM just because they think they're doing doing people a favour. They've got to want to do it themselves. And, and STEM careers vary so much, but they, they have, uh, I suppose, in common... Um, um, the opportunity to be creative, to use the skills and knowledge that you've learned at school and university, um, usually quite well paid, often have 
um, opportunities for travel. I'm inspired by the map behind you. <laughs> um, and, you know, there's a whole variety of different jobs. STEM is not about standing in a lab with um, a white coat on mixing chemicals. There are so many different jobs out there. Um, and I hope that the skills that people develop by getting involved with the Young Scientist Journal will equip them for, for any of those careers really in the future. And um, finally, just to, just to finish off, what, do you, what are you looking forward to most in the future? Um, where do you think you'd see the Young Scientist Journal in sort of around five years time? Well, I'm no longer involved in the day-to-day -day running of the journal, um, but I do um, like to support it as much as possible. I, it, we're coming up, of course, to its 20th anniversary. We will be in five or six years' time, and it would be nice to think that by that stage, any young person anywhere in the world who's done an amazing school-based or, or, or indeed home-based research project um, turns immediately to the Young Scientist Journal as a place to get it published. Um, and, I, and I really hope that the ReSTEM initiative um, and some of the other new projects going on at the journal will take off and help to connect young people together across the world. And I know that you're involved um, in more than just conducting this interview, Harry. What's, what's been your involvement in the journal? Yes. So initially I joined the Young Scientist Journal sort of at the start of uh, the COVID-19 lockdown. I've been working on YouTube, social media. I am the technical director and one of the hosts of the Young Scientist Journal podcast, STEM Z Perspectives. As well as this, I'm also the, the leader for the Young Scientist Journal merchandise, which will hopefully be launching soon. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah. As well as this, you can get involved in the social media, that kind of thing. There's also other options. So you can edit articles, uh, be part of the production team, which puts it all together, be an artist, create new designs that can be used on the website, within the journal that sort of thing. There's so much to get involved with and it's really easy to apply. Brilliant. So, so the website is ysjournal.com um, and uh, yeah, I hope that uh, any young person watching this interview will um, go straight there and, and, and have a look at how they can get involved reading, writing, editing, getting involved in the team. Um, be great to have some more people on board. Thank you, Christina. And um, I hope everyone's taken away something from this, whether it's an interest in the Young Scientist Journal or an interest in STEM. So thank you so much for, for coming to, to speak and share what the Young Scientist Journal is all about with everyone. Thank you very much, Harry.